Thanks to Brilliant for supporting my channel. Algae. You can find it in lakes, ponds, and batteries? That last one might sound a little off, but researchers from the University of Cambridge were able to develop a photosynthesis-powered battery that was able to power a microprocessor, and today we're going to dive into that paper. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and I'm a PhD student who makes videos about AI, machine learning, emerging tech, and grad life. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing and following me on all my various socials. So this is a paper entitled Powering a Microprocessor by Photosynthesis. It was published out of the University of Cambridge, and essentially what they're looking to do in this paper is develop an energy harvesting system that creates enough power to power a computer and can be built using inexpensive and common materials that avoid toxic components like the things that we tend to see in traditional lithium ion batteries. And to do this, they decided to create a battery that looks like this that is filled with a microorganism called Synecocytis, I probably pronounced that wrong, which they were able to use to successfully and continuously power a microprocessor for over six months. Additionally, they were able to do this in a non-sterile environment using an artificial lighting system with no additional battery or any fuel or energy supplement for the microorganisms. So that's pretty cool. In order to show that this battery system could actually power a computer system, they used an ARM Cortex M zero plus which is a common part of many microcontroller systems and embedded systems that can run programs to essentially calculate a sum of consecutive integers and then verify that that computation was correct based on a pre-computed value and so they program their cpu to do this task for 45 minutes of computation work and then 15 minutes of standby time over and over and over again. So 45 and 15 would be one cycle. And they were able to have this battery power the CPU for over half a year. As you can see from this figure, it's actually interesting to see how the current kind of fluctuates. You would think it would do so with the ambient lighting in the room, but there do seem to be some fluctuations that don't really correlate with the lighting, and I'll talk a little bit why that might be. But you're probably wondering at this point how this battery is actually able to power this CPU. <laughs> and the authors essentially list two possible options here, the electrochemical mode and the bioelectrochemical mode. When the battery is in electrochemical mode, the microorganisms themselves don't actually generate current. They just create an environment that is optimal for aluminum oxidation because they use aluminum as part of this battery. And that aluminum oxidative process is actually what drives the current that then powers the CPU. On the other hand, in the bioelectrochemical mode, the microorganisms in the battery are actually generating the electrons themselves and transferring them via their outer bacterial membranes to the aluminum, creating the current that then drives the CPU. And the authors say that they think that either mode could be the dominating force at any particular time and that which one dominates probably actually varies over time. Now, of course, you're also probably wondering should I be throwing my laptop into a lake? Not in those specific words, obviously, but you get my point. Can we actually use this to power something like my MacBook Pro? And the answer is not yet. This is essentially a proof of concept and the CPU that they use in this experiment consumed 0.3 microwatts per hour of energy from the battery. For comparison, my laptop can consume a max of 100 watts per hour, so it would take a little over 300 million of these algae batteries to run my laptop. And that would be a lot to keep in my office. <laughs> Additionally, a photosynthetic battery of that size would likely create other issues in terms of light actually reaching all of the algae, altering the current output, which they also actually saw in the study. So at the end of the six months, they sampled the organisms that were in the battery since this wasn't sterile and found a ton of different microorganisms in there. So they suspect that that might have contributed to the changing current output of the battery over time. Having said that, I do think that this would be a really interesting approach to dealing with things like runoff and pollution and bodies of water, because often what happens in those ecosystems is that you have overpopulation of algae that ends up essentially choking the life out of everything that's in that ecosystem. And so if we can repurpose this extra algae and turn it into batteries that can power 
any other system that you might want to use with electricity, that would be pretty cool. In short, we probably won't be using algae to power our laptops anytime soon, and you definitely shouldn't throw your laptop into a lake. If the battery is dead, that will not help. But if this sounds like a fun project that you might want to pursue, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is a visually stimulating and interactive tool for STEM learning built on the principle of active problem solving. They have an ever-growing catalog of courses in math, science, and computer science that are designed to help you gain a deeper understanding of STEM topics in a low-pressure environment. And if you're worried that you might not have time, don't worry. Their courses are broken down into bite-sized sections so you can learn by doing whenever you have time. For example, Brilliant Scientific Thinking course can help you explain the world with scientific principles. To get started for free, go to brilliant.org Jordan or visit the link in the description and the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. You can check out other reviews I've done of other papers in this playlist up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here and otherwise I will see you all in the next one. Bye!